Hey y'all, it's Gemini Jazz with House of Chiron, and I'm just here for the good news, honey. And we are back with another episode of Galactic Gossip. And like I told y'all before, this is going to be a special Galactic Gossip. I have my sensei, <laughs> Chanel. This is hey, with y'all. Lizzie's Charm. Yay, we don't have any sound effects to do no hand clap, but... <laughs> Lizzie's charm has arrived. So she will be joining me with Galactic Gossip this week. We're going to talk about a few of the aspects and what's going on and give y'all a little insight on some other ways of looking at things. So let's just dive right on into it. So at the beginning of the week, um, we do have the sun making it in conjunction with the North Node. And so what this is doing is bringing up the questions of what is destined for us and what um what is it that we see within ourselves as destined that we want to manifest what is our destiny within have anything to add to that sensei (laughs) um this is also talking a lot about um our self-expression and who we show up as in the world and kind of what all the seeds that we've been planting over the past year you know um the the destiny for our security, for our home lives, for our family. What do we want nurturing to look like for us? What does that look like that we give to others, you know? And how is it that we're expressing ourselves? And whatever it is that we've been working on, it's time to bring those two things together so that we can fully embody all of these aspects of ourselves. Yes. So moving along, we have the moon today in Aquarius and that is also making it in conjunction with the North Node in Cancer and the North Node in Cancer is making a trine to Mars in Scorpio. So this has a few different ways that you can look at it. We can say that the initiatives and the actions that we are taking can be a block to others and their um, initiatives that they're trying to actually take and you know make action on. Um, Also with Aquarius this could be telling you not to be completely detached from the energy or possibly too detached from the energy on the emotional level. Um, Also being able to see and fully feel all the feelings regarding the things that you are trying to initiate or create or take action on. And it's also a really intuitive time as far as the whole destiny energy and what steps to take. So things should just be arising naturally. Like, okay, this is where I'm going. So this is what I need to do. And I need to be devoted to this doing so that I can manifest it. And with the moon being in in Aquarius, it's supporting us in the whole detachment, as Jazz said, like not getting so gung-ho over the feelings involved and being able to see the bigger picture, the bird's eye view, so that um, everything can fully come together, especially with all the watery, energy that cancer and scorpio brings together yes so i forgot to mention that we don't have any major aspects that's happening this week um nothing that will require uh, a lot of detail but we do have one of the biggest one is jupiter moving into capricorn tomorrow yes girl yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> so jupiter and capricorn finally we are able to bring the things to fruition. We are able to materialize the things that we have been expounding on this entire time that Jupiter has been serious, right? And um, being able to materialize and create these things and manifest. So 2020 is the year of manifestation. So this is the beginning of the start of manifestation. And Jupiter lasts in a sign for an entire year. So this whole 2020 year, starting now until... Um, December, what is it, December 20... 2020. Yeah, so it's December 19th, 2020. Okay. Yeah, so starting December 2nd, 2019 to December 19th, 2020, Jupiter will be in the sign of Capricorn, helping us create the life that we want. So let's talk about real quick, let's take it back, you know, like, what were you doing nine years ago? Um, what was going on with you when the sun was in Aries, when the North Node was in Sagittarius, when Jupiter was in Aries. You coming in this way of expressing yourself and your individual beliefs. What, you know, coming into what lifelong 
truth it is that you want to hold on to, you know, that you want to embody and express yourself through, you know, and this is beginning the time when Uranus was going into Aries. So this, this, this span of time is a lot of when we see people like, oh, you know, I've, I, I woke up or had my awakening around this time mm -hmm. and X, Y, and Z. And with Jupiter coming into Capricorn, now we are bringing all of this energy to fruition because over these nine years, nine is a ending and beginning nine. cycle. Yes. You know, so we're ending old cycles and coming into something brand new. Like this is life is shifting like it's changing like I hope y'all ready because I hope y'all been planning what have you been doing for the past nine years what have right. you been inv investing in your life what seeds have you been playing who you've been hanging out with like how have you been treating people how have you been allowing people to treat you like how have you been treating yourself right that is most important have you been aligning yourself even through all the trials and tribulations have you still chosen to take the higher road mm -hmm. versus um seeing yourself playing a victim mm -hmm. instead of because if you do that that is this energy is going to expound even more on that those lower vibrations mm -hmm. and it's going to be the devil mm -hmm. all right because that is what capricorn is like it's it's the darkness it's the the ego centric energy of trying to materialize life when you know with jupiter involved you got to tap in the spiritual work is necessary so right. um that's just something to consider over this next year and if you haven't been investing now is always a great time always a great time <laughs> yes and so also jupiter and capricorn would be making a trine to uranus and taurus and so with uranus being in the sign of taurus it is shaking up and making um, us readjust and reevaluate and making changes to the things that we value, our possessions, all those, you know, tangible things that we want, how we make our money, that's our business, um, the, the money that we have, what do we value within money, what do we value within these partnerships, and it's everything that you possess, including the beliefs you possess surrounding these things. So with this trine, it's going to actually bring a manifestation of the things that we have now declared truly valuable to ourselves. So, also Jupiter and Capricorn will be making a square to Chiron and Aries, and I'm gonna let you talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is ooh. Mm. So this is what brought up the whole nine-year cycle. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. Me and Jazz were sitting, <laughs> you know, studying, 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 talking about all of these things um, before we came and did our video. And so I decided to go back and look and see what was going on um, for myself when Chiron was in Pisces, because Chiron is in Aries. That's my sun sign. So this has been triggering a lot of identity within my being within myself who i show up as and all those things all right so what i have gathered <laughs> especially since chiron is in retrograde and it's in this first degree mm -hmm. um along in this square to jupiter this is a lot about um my personal well it's in my eighth house the eighth house is of intimate relationships and jupiter is in my fifth house so this is how i express myself mm -hmm. and before all this energy came about i had went through all this massive changes and now i'm to the place where i'm comfortable in being this person right so this can work for me in one or two ways this can either draw up some easily triggered wounds mm -hmm. or i can come to a place of seeing all the healing that i have done all the healing that i have gone through so it's the same um a healing that i've gone through within my intimate relationships and expressing myself expressing my truth mm -hmm. you know and being on my path mm -hmm. and however that is that that's looking for me so the same it's the same for you guys you all know it, all everybody um we it is a it's either a battle between you and your beliefs and how it is that you are going to structure these things and allow yourself to heal so these structures can be built or the triggers are going to be coming up that need to happen in order so you can do this right so it's just all in a matter of where you we each are in our lives mm -hmm. and in the phases and the stages. Right, exactly. So um 
Yeah, I think that's really all I have to say about that. So, you know, we can expect either some conflicts or some challenges, or we can expect retribution. Right. Um, it really, yeah, the growth. Because with me um, around that time, that was around 2010, 2011, um, I came into, I was actually going through a struggle of what I truly believed. I was finding myself being, you know, following religion and the illusions behind, you know, certain religion things. And um, that also helped me transition to, I went through a whole divorce. Um, my awakening came around 2012. I made a move. I mean, in this last nine years, I have gone through a lot of transitions and a lot of changes that have brought me to where I am today, where I can actually sit here and talk to you all. This is part of that, my self-expression. Y'all would not find me in front of a camera unless I was dancing on stage, honey. But <laughs> now I can actually speak my truth and I can say, hey, I am a whole bruja in these streets. <laughs> and I'm proud about it. Before, I was hiding behind who I really was. So this is what this energy has brought us to today and so now we are going to be seeing the manifestation of that even more so even if you look at the numerology of 2020 two and two is about partnership and it's not just about intimate partnerships it's about the partnership you have with yourself the partnership you have within business your higher mind versus your lower self all of these things is the integration of all the polarities in life i'm a gemini i'm all about duality <laughs> i see it all so moving on you want to talk about Jupiter okay. conjunct Folu? So, um, ha. Jupiter is going to be conjunct asteroid Folu. Folu is, so the asteroids are baby planets. Mm -hmm. um, they, these asteroids in particular are symbolized by centaurs, kind of like a Sagittarius energy, really. Mm -hmm. um, so Folu in itself is like the straw that broke the camel's back. It is the catalyst yes. that un, un, unties everything or brings everything together. So with this, um, with Jupiter moving into Capricorn and Follow being in Capricorn, we may be coming to some realizations um, or just some small minute happenings in life like, oh, like, damn, like, the aha moments. right, like, okay, here it goes. That's what that was all about. Yeah, like, okay, I've been through this and this is why, mm -hmm. you know, and this is, we, I can't say what it's going to bring. Only you can. <laughs> because yes. um, everything manifests in so many different ways, you yeah, know? So, different people. Mm -hmm. so it is just a matter of staying aware and present with all of these energies. Well, it's not a lot of energy this week, but mm -hmm. um, just recognizing what fruits we are bearing and recognizing what also is still leaving. Mm -hmm. You know, because that is one thing Capricorn is very good for is getting rid of all the small things that are no longer serving us because yes. um, it always sees the bigger picture and the details are always the most important in the bigger picture. All right. So we talked about the nine year transit of North Node and Sagittarius. Did we speak about that? Um, yeah, we talked about that a Briefly. little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jupiter returning to that certain area. So this is like a completion transit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also bearing fruit of this transit. We discussed that. And the awakening with the Sag energy. We talked about all of that. So that's what we have for Galactic Gossip. I hope y'all have enjoyed my sensei. <laughs> She's going to do something special and pull cards for us as a collective energy. So I'm going to let her do her thing. Okay. We are just going to pull some cards to see who Spirit wants us to know this week. Like, what what advice does Spirit have for us? Spirit, guys, ancestors. It's the week of December 1st to December 7th. 7th. Oh, all right. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So... What messages do you have for us? What support and guidance do you have for us to carry along the way, along our path, along our journey? What will help support us within our truth? Mm. I'm just pulling oracle cards. I don't have any tarot cards with me.
while she's shuffling, I will definitely say go follow Lizzie's Charm on Instagram. That's at Lizzie. I will tag her in the description. It's L-I-Z-Z-I-E-S Charm, C-H-A-R-M. Um, she, oh, where's the underscore somewhere? Mm -hmm. Afterwards? Yeah, at the oh, end. Oh, at the end. There's an underscore. I'll tag. So y'all don't worry about it. Just go and click the link. Um, yeah, so there is a lot of information that she gives um, regarding the moon phases. Uh, there's so much information that she has in this small little beautiful frame here. This little beautiful head of hers is just so knowledgeable of all people. So <laughs> go follow her or else. Let's see what's here. Oh, wow. Okay. So, our focus this week we have is to share our voice. Come out of the cave. It's time to speak your truth and live your truth. Be on your path and your journey um, to really embody this life it is that you're living. This here symbol is the Port of Fortune. The Port of Fortune represents how your sun and your moons come together and express through your rising sign. So your moon is like your foundational energy, your sun is your expression, and your rising is how it is that you're embodying these two energies together, right? So um, if you don't know your sun, moon, or rising, you can check out astro.com, type in your birth information. If you don't know your birth information, you can always order your birth chart. Um, I don't know how much that costs, but these cards are, you know, it's time to come out of the cave, to be yourself, to be in that Sagittarius energy, to let that energy manifest because the earth is... Um, it is a Capricorn energy, you know, it brings the stability, the grounding, the fruition, the, <clears throat> the prosperity and all these things tied to that. So um, it's time for us to kind of just come forward and stand up for ourselves, honestly, and be you. Yes. So we have trust your path. Can you see that? If you knew you were supported, what would you do? So this is a lot about this Uranus and Taurus energy, mm -hmm. right? And the moon is going to be in Aquarius as well, which Uranus rules. Mm -hmm. So this is in, okay, so let me write this down really quickly. So Aquarius, it is, it speaks about the purpose of our path. It, this is why we chose to do what it is that we're doing. It, it speaks of our material goals. Um, I'm sorry, it speaks of our material gains and it speaks of, the goals in which it is that we have right so um it's kind of time that we choose the values for ourselves, which allow us to trust the direction in which it is that we're going to that we're heading to and really kind to kind of be detached from any outcome you know it is when you're going through these things going through emotions it can be i don't want to say frustrating but we can kind of catch ourselves up in trying to be like, okay, well, we want this to happen. We want this to happen. But when Uranus is involved, we don't really know what the outcome is going to be because mm -hmm. things are continuously, consistently changing. They, and they change in a manner that seeks to evolve you to your highest expression. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because the whole idea of Uranus and purpose is about helping others. It's about what water are you bearing to put out other people's fires, right? You know, so it is a matter of just going with the flow and trusting with the changes. That is that whole being present so that you can show up in the space it is that you need to be in so that you can come forward and shine, you know, do you. So the next card that we have, we can look at this as the advice. So trust your niggle. Um, <clears throat> what is the niggle trying to tell you? So what is that inner knowing trying to tell you? And this may be in regards to um, intimate relationships. Um, this can be in regards to people that you share resources with, people you attain money from, people who you gain resources through. This can also speak of deep-seated fears that you've been holding on to that it's time to let go of. Or maybe something needs to rebirth in your life maybe it's time to let go of something that is no longer serving you and that brings me back to this whole um uranus energy uranus is calling us to shift consistently shift until we are in the expression that 
feels right that feels like home mm-hmm. right because even though uranus is always changing it always knows how to find a home right where it is you know so um it's a matter of trusting and recognizing what needs to be transformed in your life and releasing whether that's people habits places things um this can also even speak to um tapping into the occult energies tarot astrology divination anything of those sorts to um help you gauge what it is your intuition is guiding you towards right so what we got here i pulled some, i rolled some dice and we got the south node we got the third house and libra All right so right now what is anything still in libra i don't think, I don't so. think so so this is basically um talking about things of before you know the past um finding balance to how it is that we've communicated maybe there's something some ways that maybe something needs to change in your business that you're building um that's no longer working for you that can bring you some type of balance to maybe new partnerships or um, new contracts that you're building this can also speak to relationships and speaking up and communicating better so this is libra Oh, it sure is. Mm-hmm. So this could be speaking to marriage, marriage if you are married, you know, and really finding ways to communicate on the same levels, um, finding ways to kind of find balance in the ways in which it is that we speak to one another, that we connect with one another, that we understand one another and find more clarity in the things in which it is that we think we know about others and um, also share sharing yourself in a way that helps others get clear in what it is they think they know about you you know so that the past can be let go of so that we can further flow into the secure future of the north node being in cancer because the south node right now is in capricorn which speaks to this jupiter energy so that is a lot of restructuring pluto's there Saturn's there, ending all car- old karma again, transfer, transforming and rebirthing things with the Pluto energy. So take that as you may, and I hope that is helpful for you guys this week. Um, that is all I have. Yay! <laughs> so y'all finally got to meet the person I always talk about in a lot of my videos and a lot of my posts. So thank y'all for tuning in to Galactic Gossip. Y'all will be seeing more of our beautiful faces and wonderful spirits to share all the good news to y'all. Because um, we'll be talking about more than just astrology. Mm-hmm. So, we got a lot to say. <laughs> Don't Always. Always. <laughs> it's always a always conversation, a conversation honey. honey. <laughs> okay. Well, y'all have a good one. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs>